Hello everyone, uh, thanks for joining us uh, today for this quick little demo here. Uh, we're gonna give a few more seconds here for some folks who come in, we're still trickling in, in here. Uh, but again, uh, while people are coming in, uh, thanks for setting out some time to take a look at the stuff that we have here today. Uh, we do wanna make sure that uh, you know we are respectful of your time um, so we'll keep things to, you know, uh, 15 minutes on the presentation and, uh, you know, we'll rush through a, a few of the things here, but just keep in mind that, you know, we'll have a long time in the, uh, after those 15 minutes um, to do all the Q&A and things that, that, that are going on. So, again, thanks for, for joining us in here. Um, just a quick intro about myself. Uh, my name is Ray. I manage a division here for Hard Energy that has to do with all our mapping and data services. Um, so I'll be walking through um, our application here and what you can find with it. Um, the application that, that we're showing here is Energy Data Link. It's actually a tool for visualizing and presenting uh, the premium data services that we have and that we offer to folks, um, which is energy infrastructure assets across multiple different uh, areas. Uh, we cover the entire supply chain for energy. Um, so we go from wells, completion and production, um, all the way through midstream pipeline and facilities, gathering systems, uh, downstream to terminals, electric generation, and everything in between. Um, so there's a lot of information, but I want to really rush through it <laughs> to be respectful of your times. Uh, but after the, uh, the 15 minutes there, we'll have a Q&A uh, so we can take as long as you need to make sure that everything is clear in there. Uh, we license the data in terms of data sets. Um, so this would be sort of an analogy of these folders that you see in here. Um, some of these folders are, for example, natural gas midstream, or some folks only license access to our crude oil, um, sorry, our oil and gas upstream data sets. So it includes everything that's in here. Uh, and then they can filter it down by regions, like, you know, I only work sort of in the eastern half of the United States and I don't care about the rest. So you can kind of manage your licenses and your uh, extent of the data that way, right? Um, so as far as how we're going to go through uh, the presentation, we're going to go through upstream. We'll start in there just showing you how the data is and how you can manipulate and create some reports. We'll go into some of the midstream, some of the downstream, uh, and then we'll go into quickly some of the functionalities for the interface um, and that sort of thing. Right? Um, so I do have a couple things just turned on in here. So you would you know, get something to look at while you were loading. But I'll remove all this stuff right now just by clicking this button. And then that would um, give me a clean slate to start. Okay, so there might be a little bit of lag with the internet connection of what I'm doing. So I'll try to maybe slow it down to make sure that I am in sync <laughs> to what is happening on the screen. Um, so within the left side here, we have our folders. Um, for example, there are upstream oil and gas uh, data sets. Uh, here, obviously, the most important one is the wells. Uh, once I turn on the wells, obviously, they're displayed on the map. Uh, but also, there are some reports that get generated down below here related to whatever layer I have turned on. So as soon as I turn on a different layer, you'll see multiple different tabs. And these are some pre can queries that can kind of help you visualize the data when you have some filters applied. Uh, now, I don't have any filter applied to the wells, so the reports that we're seeing down here are for all the wells in the United States. So if I look, for example, production by operator, we'll be looking at the production of all the operators in the United States, right? And cumulative wells will be the top wells sorted by the, the highest uh, BOE over the past 12 months. Um, so those will be without any um, filters. But that's not as useful, right? Um, so what we can do is I'll pick some place here in, in the Permian. Uh, it's you know our most uh, interesting sort of uh, play right now. Um, so I'll add a filter or a rule that I want to begin filtering my wells by. And what I'll do is I'll do produce information. Uh, by the way, these are all the different things that I can filter wells by. There's plenty of stuff that you can begin dissecting this information and combining it with each other. Uh, in this case, what we'll do is produce information. I'm just going to say that contains the word, word Wolf Camp. Wolf Camp. 
Well, if I spell it right, Wolfcamp. Okay. So if I click on that, you see the table down below, it's already updated. So it's showing us the to top Wolfcamp uh, wells. Uh, if I look, for example, now the production by operator, this is now showing me the uh, top operators within the Wolfcamp. Now, anytime that I see a table within our application or a chart, just know that it's one button away from downloading. Um, so you can easily extract all this information into multiple formats. In this case, this button here will give you access to exporting it in, um, in Excel. And you can export either just a single table or all the tables at once, and you can determine how many results you want to look at in, in, your, in your exports. Okay. Obviously, the map also gets updated uh, to show us what the, um, uh, what the wells look like for my filter. And now I can begin running some of these uh, filters that are up here. I'm sorry, uh, reports that are up here. The first one is a decline curve. So I can look at a decline curve, and this is going to give me a decline curve for whatever my filter is. Now, in this case, our filter was a simple sort of formation Wolfcamp filter. And it's going to give me a decline curve for all these uh, three different data sets. Uh, I can remove things. For example, if I only want to look at oil, I can do that. So they're all dynamic charts, as I mentioned before. They're easily exportable within the application. I can look at it by different uh, by lateral lengths, by linear logarithmic, or I can also look at it by, by vintage. So I can see over time improvements in the, uh, in the production uh, for these wells. Right, and you can export all this information out. Right? So our next report that we have in here is a production report. Again, it's going to take whatever grouping of wells we have applied, and it's going to give us a report on, okay, this is the production for those wells. In this case, we have 21,000 wells here that make up the wolf camp, and this is going to be a report for that. So it's really designed to quickly uh run reports and export the information out so if you have a meeting and you want to quickly kind of learn what is the production for this particular operator in this county or for this formation literally within less than a minute you can log it into the application click a couple buttons and be be on on your way um, so it gives you total production over time it gives you some averages production for month for uh for that formation uh or that grouping whatever it was in this case is a formation uh, production by uh, month, so you can see kind of where the production kind of ranked up. Uh, we can look at by yearly production, so this one goes a little further in the past, so we can see back to the 70s, uh, being kind of flat until horizontal drilling kind of kicked in, and we can see what that looks like. We can add different uh, fields, uh, I'm sorry, data points to, to this uh, charts, like producing numbers of wells producing or production rate. Uh, again, as I, we saw before, you can, you know, click and remove things in there that are only what you're looking for. And then it gives you a, another breakdown uh, of some charts that might be useful um, to look at. Uh, so this is a breakdown by operator, so you can see where are the top operators within my uh, filter. Uh, again, these are dynamic, so if I only want to look at natural gas or I only want to look at crude oil, uh, I can do it that way. Right? Um, and again, export all this information out. And by formation, this is obviously we're only looking at wolf camp, so no big surprise there. Breaks it down by states, and then we're looking at by county, uh, what counties are sort of the best producing ones on that. And in terms of exporting, there's plenty of inf information or formats, I mean, that can be exported out. Uh, the first one is obviously a PDF, so you can get everything that's in here, all these charts in a PDF format. So if that's really useful, if you got to go to a meeting or something, just quickly just go and export this PDF with all this data. Um, then the other one is in a CSV format. This is basically Excel. Uh, then you have access to or the third-party softwares that people like to use. So you have the IHS Petra, PhD Win, and uh, Geographics. Um, so you have formats in those that you can use for that. Okay, and the last report that I can run is a completion report, which again is going to take into account, um, you know, all the wells within my group and, um, you know, give you some statistics for them. Uh, mostly it's counts of things, so it's a count of wells by formation, counts of well by statuses, count of well by operator, by trajectory, um, and then it goes into the completions. 
So let's give you completions by year. So you can see kind of where uh, completions here in the Wolf Camp peaked uh, and where we are. Well, we haven't finished reporting in 2020, but we're probably going to be somewhere down here. So big drop. Uh, plugged by year, uh, wells have been plugged uh, during uh, different years for our group. And then it's going to give us activity um, in terms of completions for different time periods. In this case, this is completions um, by operators uh, within the past 12 months. So you can see WPX, EOG in a period of 12 months. Now I can look at smaller time periods to see if I find any trends. Um, so if I do six months, I can see the numbers, the, I mean, the operators changed a little bit. Uh, more interesting, for example, EOG disappeared. So what it tells me is EOG was very actively uh, completing um, perhaps, you know, 10 months ago, but in the past six months, they have disappeared pretty much. Yep. Um, so it gives you some uh, activity. Who are the most recent sort of... Um, uh, folks doing completions and then and that breaks it down by state again this is texas and new mexico and uh, by counties too so if you want to look at you know what are the counties that are more actively uh, running completions right okay so that's uh and it just the three reports that that you can run uh within that so uh they are sort of complex rules that you can run to add different things to it. Um, so in this case, let's take a look at a combination of them. Um, so he see Chevron in there. I can do Wolf Camp formation, but I want to narrow it down even more, right? So I want to see operator, and I'll do contains because it's a kind of a shorthand, but you can do equals to exactly, right? I do uh, Chevron. So when I do this, I'll get a combination of Wolf Camp and Chevron. Um, so I can see my charts down here are showing me only Chevron wells within the Wolf Camp. Uh, if I go on our mind map, obviously it shows what the footprint uh, for the Chevron Wolf Camp wells is. Uh, but I can run those reports again. I'll just do one. Uh, so this is a production report. So this is going to give me a production for Chevron Wolf Camp wells. And it's the same sort of information that we looked at before. Um, again, you can quickly export that out. So within less than a minute, I can see how much any operator is producing uh, anywhere. Now, another way that we can kind of do this and kind of help us figure out, like, is there a hot spot? Is there any area where there's more production? Currently, the style that we're using in here is for um, visualizing it by commodity so you see the green ones are mostly oil wells and the red ones are mostly gas wells but i can go in here and, and use a couple different uh styles so if i look at this one 12 month production now it's going to give me a um, a hot spot really right uh these larger dots are wells that have produced more within the past 12 months so even though there's a lot of little wells in this area, they're not as important for that operator. Um, so their really area of interest is this side over here, right? And um, so those are ways that you can kind of filter those things out. But we looked at sort of how to run reports on a macro scale, like creating groupings. Uh, but you can go down into the individual um, operator. In this case, we have uh, the wells. Uh, and I can click anywhere where I see these eyeballs. Um, I can get the well report card. So if I click on this guy, so this is a information for one single well. Uh, it's going to give us what is what we call the well report card, which has all the header information in there, the depths, the location, some production summaries. If there are some documents related to uh, to that well, you find them in here too. So if I click on here. It takes us to our library, which is part of our application here as well, where we have over 4 million documents. And we can kind of see anything that we have related to that particular well. Um, some of them are plats, uh, some things related to surveys. Um, so there's quite a little bit of data um, that you can get into for particular wells in there too. Uh, okay. Uh, but more importantly, we can see similar charts and information like we looked at before at the macro level, right? We can look at individually for um, for the wells. So we have a monthly production for that particular well, 
a yearly production. Now it's a it looks like it's a recent well, um, so there's not a lot of historical information for that one. Uh, but then it goes into the formation tops, you know, as it drills down into it. And if it's a, a uh, horizontal uh, fract well, uh, you get information from the fract focus database that we have uploaded into here as well. And you can expand that and read a little bit more specific for uh, what was done on that fract job um, for that well. Yeah, right. that makes sense. And again, we can export information out from you directly from the charts in here, or I can export them into different formats or the PDF for that particular well. Um, I can export directly from the interface right here. I can export a grouping of wells from this side, uh, or I can export a shapefile if uh, folks on the call here are familiar with GIS data. You can export it directly from there too. So plenty of ways that you can uh, export information out. Okay, so that's for the wells. Uh, so we obviously have directionals, uh, acreage positions to, um, let's put the acreage one, I can kind of take a look at. Um, so our acreage uh, layer uh, covers all of the United States, uh, seamless in there. We uh, offer quite a different sources to building up this information in there. Um, they, are, they can be filtered just so we looked in, in the wells. In this case, there's a filter one here that is very popular uh, with our customers, which is sort of this BOE per square mile. Um, so it cleans up some of our, our acreage positions. So if you want, for example, I want to narrow it down and take a look at really the best sort of producing uh, acreages. So I get to 100,000 barrels over the past 12 months uh, per square mile. So it kind of cleans up. Um, now these are, so even though we have information on operators that own acreages um, everywhere, this would give me um, sort of a view of what are sort of the, the, the top uh, producing areas and who uh, own those acreages. Um, if I look, for example, at this report in here, and I use this filter by view, which you can use with any layer in here too. This is filter by view. It's gonna create a filter based on whatever is on my screen. So if I now look at this tab in here, which is um, acreages, um, yeah, square mile acreages by operator, and I pan around into different places, you can see how those charts kind of get updated based on what I'm looking at in there, right? Let me remove that one and we're going to show you some of the information on the details that we have in there. So let me click on, on some of these guys in here. And we can see what information we have for them, owner, operator, um, sources of the information, um, URLs, any notes related to, um, to that particular acreage position. Uh, we can take a look at, for example, uh, some of the sources. So a lot of the the, um, the pop-ups that we see have uh, information about uh, links to our library. Um, so you can kind of go into them and see where we source out some of that information um, and read more within the documents in there. Um, so you can kind of you know, look at data um, kind of in an unstructured way if you're going to read a little bit more about, uh, about that sort of thing, right? Okay. Right, so that, uh, let me wrap up there, the, um, the upstream um, side of things. Uh, we'll kind of look into um, the natural gas as an example of midstream. So obviously we do have uh, pipelines, facilities, and that covers everything on the complete spectrum from gathering systems all the way to transmission. Uh, we can filter things out uh, for uh, operators or for statuses the same way that we did in other, um, in other data sets up there. I can add a couple different things in here. So if I want, for example, to look at all the assets by a particular company, I can do something owner. And again, I like my contains, kinder, kind of quick and uh, dirty little filter. And that should give me very quickly, you know, these are all the natural gas assets owned by Kinder Morgan. That includes, you know, uh, pipelines and facilities and, and everything in between. Um, within the application in there, you can see multiple different uh, tabs depending on how many filters we have applied in there. Uh, so the ones that we looked at in here were for, uh, you know, 
upstream wells, but the same way um, you have for um, the midstream infrastructure. So I can look, for example, these are you know capacity by by operators. So I can remove our filter in there. This gets me all the operators everywhere. Um, so there's quite a lot of fl flexibility uh, that that you have within the application to kind of look at uh, data. Um, so besides filtering it, uh, you can read a little bit more about different operators in there. Um, so if, for example, I want to look at you know some of these guys in here. Let's say DCP midstream. I can click on my little icon in there for that entity, and it takes us to our corporate entities database. Uh, and I can read a little bit more about that particular uh, company within that. Um, so there's quite a bit of, uh, of functionalities that I can do uh, within there as well. Right? So enterprise products, again, I can take me to there within the application. And I can look at you know who the, the parent of that entity is. I can click on that. Uh, and for some of them, we do have information like I can click this uh, data here and map all the um, the assets that they have. Uh, if there's a publicly traded company, I can see some financial information from them. Um, or if I'm interested in a directory, I can click on, on that icon. It takes us to the directory within our database and you can get some information, owner uh, contact information and individual um, uh, yeah, personnel within that, that entity in there, right? So. All right, so that's from the on the midstream on the natural gas side. I'm trying to rush it here so that we don't take too much of the time. Um, so on the liquid side, similar information, right? We have NGLs, uh, crude oil. Um, so if you want to look at terminal facilities, I can zoom in into uh, some area. Let's go into the Houston Ship Channel here. There's quite a bit of them in there, and I can turn on uh, you know the, the pipelines within there as well. And they will have the same sort of filtering capabilities uh, for these guys in terms of uh, ownership, um, operators, capacities that we have for them. Um, so all that information, you'll have access to them as well. And then let me just refresh here. I'm getting some delay with my internet. So let's do a liquid terminals. Zoom into Houston, put some product pipelines. You can read a little bit about these guys. I can change the background. So if I want to look at, for example, and drill very close to some of these things, I can identify and, and uh, label some of these guys. We can see there are different facilities in here. Um, I can identify within our map. So let's say I'm curious about this terminal in here. So I can see, okay, this is a terminal owned by uh, Kinder Morgan. Uh, what the name of the terminal is, the status, what capacity, the storage capacity it has, some hyperlinks to it, numbers of tanks, whether it has rail access in and out, both, uh, water access, no, it does not, what commodities does it hold, so this is basically a refined product, some details on that, uh, what pipeline serving, so there's quite a bit of information for facilities uh, that you can click within that and obviously export the information out within that. So the last layers that I just want to show you in here are the electric infrastructure. So if you're interested in that further downstream, uh, we do have power generation and, and electric infrastructure across all the United States. We can sort this out so we can see it better. So this will give you access to um, electrical infrastructure uh, within all of the United States. And, and lastly, uh, we have uh, these data sets down here that you can use for um, work that is not something that we license, but it's included uh, with any of the data sets. So if you're interested in taking a look at and filtering for township section ranges, those you have access to mapping within there. Uh, you also have access to um, the parcel data. So if you're interested to see who owns perhaps some parcel, uh, the land, this land <laughs> for the parcel, you can click on this information and kind of look at ownership for different areas, uh, building footprints, all those sort of things are within that application uh, as part of the service. And then let's go. Uh, so those are sort of the layers in there. Um, in terms of what other things I have access to, obviously we looked at the document library 
uh, where you can kind of look at all the different you know, investor presentation. We have over 4 million of them, annual reports, press releases. You can search within that application and, and keep track of activity that's going on. Um, a and D transactions is something we're rolling out next week as well. Uh, you can take a sneak peek in there. Uh, we track uh, data on where transactions transactions have happened uh, across midstream, downstream, and upstream. Uh, they all have information in there and buttons that you can click out to not only learn a little bit more about that. Um, um, I'm sorry about that uh, transaction, but you can actually map. Um, some of those assets to, to figure out where they are. You can learn a little bit more about a, a buyer or a seller by either looking at documents that they have within our library or a directory of information that they have. Um, so quite a bit of stuff within that. Um, that there are entities, corporate entities, again, the ability to filter and look for different companies and look what subsidiaries they have and begin sort of a linking back into, into other assets. Uh, the directory we looked at uh, and the natural gas report is a gas flows in and out of all the interstate natural gas infrastructure uh, within uh, the United States. So you can filter and look at daily gas flows through, through any of these things. Um, so I did rush quite a bit um, through this. We're trying to make sure that, that we have uh, as much time as we need for answering any questions. Um, so I'll just open it up um, to folks if they have any, any questions. Um, so you can type it in there in the little chat window. And um, Alex, that, that's helping me out in here. We can, um, we can look at it. So, all right, so I do see the question. Uh, workstations uh, like Petra. Uh, so I'm assuming that the question is whether it works with Petra and yes, it does. Uh, hopefully that's the question. Uh, but yes, you can export information from the wells out in in Petra format, um, which IHS and that has the um, uh, which I call it the um, uh, what's it 295 or uh, we can actually look at it. <laughs> Let's see. So within the export, yeah, Petra 297 and 298 uh, to export the information, the header and the production file for that. Okay. Any other questions that come up? Okay, I have another question in here that came up that was whether we have information on projects. Uh, we do, um, so we can kind of look at projects in here. Uh, so we do have, for example, on the midstream side of things, um, you can always uh, filter by a status. So in this case, I turn on a couple different uh, layers in here, you know, natural gas pipelines and processing plants. And they'll will share a status. So I can do a status uh, equals to under development. And if I filter by that, I can see uh, ah, Jesus pipelines and some facility and gas processing plans uh, at different stages of, of development, right? So some gathering little specs, some transmission and some facilities in there. Within the upstream side, we always have a um, a status also that it's uh, uh, permitted. So if you want to look at wells, you can look at permitted wells uh, as a status within the application, uh, within the filter. And then you can narrow it down even by the permit dates and the permit numbers, um, that sort of thing. So we do have those things in there too. Any other questions? Okay, I can see a few. Uh, what is the source of the data and how current is? The source of the data really is very depending on what layer we're looking at. And even some of those layers have multiple sources. Um, so if you're looking at, for example, the, the well data, the source is the different state agencies. Um, so if we're looking at, for example, the acreage positions, 
uh, we have four different sources in there, investor presentations, annual reports. Uh, we look for offshore BOEM for those leases, and we look for uh, BLM, uh, public land services for those leases that they have in the public domain. For the pipeline data sets, for example, there are really hundreds of different sources. Um, so there's really not a quick, easy way to answer that. It just really depends on it, um, on what layer in, um, in um, sort of even within the layer, um, what part of the layer. For example, um, you know, the pipelines may come from one place, but the diameter for that pipeline may have come from a press release. Um, so it really is a, a combination of multiple different pieces of things, right? But good question on that. Okay, please show me how we can visualize gathering, processing, and transport pipeline details for any particular field. Um, so that might be a little tricky uh, to looking at pipelines uh, for a particular field. The best way to do it, something would be just zooming in into an area. Um, so let's pick, for example, this one, because it's a nice sort of standalone feel. Um, so I can look at the San Juan Basin, right? Um, and I can see, for example, if I turn on my uh, filter by view, right? I create a filter based on what I'm looking at. I can actually narrow it down and really trace out an outline using this tool here. Um, but I do filter by view and I'm showing the pipeline. Let's put the processing plans. There's a couple of processing plans in there too and I'll reorder it. So it'll be on the top. So my reports down here will be based on uh, what, what's on my screen. Um, so if I look, for example, here, the top operators uh, in this area, right? If I look at for the, uh, let's see, gas plants. So this would be the top gas plants uh, within this area. So I can see the different operator and what capacities they are. Um, so that's, I guess, one way to do that. Um, you can look also at the meter points. Uh, the meter points we didn't have will have receipts and deliveries. Uh, within this area and as long as they are connected to an interstate system I can actually see on a daily basis what gas is going in and out uh, of this meter points um, so that's one way I guess you can you can look at it um, so yeah uh, not a perfect way to filter it by a field um, but yeah that's kind of the easiest way that we have uh, how easy is to export data into geo workstation like Petra? Um, I guess it's a similar question as before. Um, you know, how easy is it to export uh, data into Petra um, or other systems in there too? Um, same way. I mean, so let's say that I have uh, my wells in here and I wanted to somehow filter. Let's create a filter with name here. And I just want this well. <laughs> uh, it's an odd way to filter it, but, you know, you can do it. Um, so I can go into our, uh, right here, uh, I can export this information out uh, that way. If I look at the production report, I can also export it from here. So this would be 800 wells that we have in there. I have my drop down in here that I can pick what format I want to pick it in. So Petra will be right there, geographic, PhD one, uh, and we're working on areas in there too. Uh, or you can actually export it individually from the well report card. You can see the same sort of information. This would be for just one well, uh, while the other one was for a group of wells. And I have the download in here where I can download it down, um, like that as well. Okay, hopefully that answered that question. Uh, what is the cost of the service? Well, it depends on what data you're licensing. So, yeah, sorry, working from home. Um, so it depends on what layer uh, your, I'm sorry, what data sets you are subscribed to. So if we have, for example, the natural gas data set, um, you know, this is priced separately as a, you know, the crude oil, I'm sorry, the, the upstream uh, data set. So it can range something as small as $2,000 for one state of one uh, layer. Um, all the way up to $45,000 for everything that we have under the kitchen sink, right? And, and those licenses are unlimited number of users. Um, so if you have a company that has, you know, 100 users, like we have some of our 
BPs and Exxons, that's included in there, right? Uh, whether you are just a one-man shop, uh, again, uh, it's unlimited number of users, uh, and we highly encourage different users to get access to it because you can save your maps and your queries and share those maps with other people. Um, so, for example, these are maps that I have created. So, this is an EOG Eagle Ford asset map. Right, it goes in there, remembers what filters I have applied, and I can go ahead and share this map with some other ones, uh, other folks in my uh, in my company, uh, and they'll have access to like, hey, this is the project that we're working on. They'll have a little drop down, and they can see that map. Um, you can export shape files if you have your own shape file data in there. You can load it to the application um, and share it with uh, with folks in your company too. Okay. Uh, Right. Do you have any plans to add wind energy to the database? Uh, we actually do have some uh, wind data. Uh, we haven't uploaded in here, honestly, because of demand. <laughs> uh, there hasn't been a lot of customer demand for uh, data um, for wind and renewable energy. Um, so we, we honestly don't have a lot of plans for it, um, just because there hasn't been a lot of demand for it. But I can actually take a look at it and talk with our development team because it might be something good to, to add on the the electricity data set um, to maintain that updated a little bit. So good question on that one. Um, how how up to date is the production data? Uh, the production data is basically we have the same delay as any states. Um, so it depends again on the state because our source data for this, just like the source for anybody else, is the different state agencies. Um, so different states report data with different lags. Um, so some states actually may be four months behind. Some states are two months behind. On average, I think it's usually about three months behind or something like that. Um, so we maintain the data on a monthly basis. Um, so if a new production report uh, gets published by the, um, uh, the, the state agencies, we collect that information, processes it, and put it in our application. Um, so we're kind of at the mercy of the, uh, the different state agencies for, um, uh, for the production, right? So that's one of those things. Uh, is the well production data by lease or you have an algorithm to parse it out number of wells? Uh, yeah, good question. So this is whether the, um, the production is by lease or uh, allocated by individual wells. Some states like Texas, for example, uh, reports their oil production by the lease, by the group of wells that are within that lease. Um, and so you can uh, report it by the lease or actually do the allocation. We are doing the allocation and we use the same formula that basically everybody uses for their um, their allocation based on initial production rates and that sort of thing. So the well uh, production that you see within our application is by, um, by the well and it's allocated. Uh, we're actually working for next week. I believe we're actually going to have the option to look at it by lease. Um, so some folks can look at it if they really wanted to look at the original by lease, they can do it too. Um, but so far, as of the application right now, um, they, uh, the production is uh, allocated by, by the individual well. Right. Okay, any more questions in there? Okay, here's another one, okay. We have focus for mainly in Texas. How often are the states uh, updated Colorado, for example? Uh, well, we do updates to our data on a monthly basis. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in just Texas or in Colorado, the data will be updated um, just for that. Um, you know, depends on what layer, for example. I mean, for, uh, you know, we're very actively, obviously on the well, uh, on the acreage positions, those things get updated. Uh, you know, processing plants, natural gas pipelines, all those things are updated uh, on a monthly basis. Um, so there might be some obscure layer that we just haven't updated, uh, but for the most part, we're very active uh, on all these things regardless of what state um, it really is. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's updated on, on a monthly basis. You know, we keep track of ownership changes. Um, so when we do an update, it's a pretty significant one. Uh, we add somewhere between, you know, 2,000 to sometimes 5,000 miles of pipelines added to the database just 
in that month. Uh, same thing for facilities. We add probably hundreds of facilities, uh, change ownerships. We keep track of transactions and who the previous owners or something was. Um, so it, it's a very actively developed data set, right? Okay, any other questions in there? Okay, I think I've kind of covered all the ones that are in here. Uh, we'll give a few, a few seconds here. Yes, I got that one too, source of data, yep. Um, so uh, I'll give a few more uh, seconds in case somebody has any other ones, uh, but just wrap it up. I mean, it definitely took uh, a little longer uh, of your time, so I apologize for that, um, but it's good. It has really good questions in here. Uh, we'll make sure that everyone who has, uh, you know, uh, participate in this. We'll give them access and trials to the data um, so you can play around and do some of the same things that I was doing in there on your own. Uh, if you get stuck uh, playing with the data and, and, and logging in and, and clicking around stuff, uh, just reach out to us. We'll be happy to join uh, a go to meeting similar to this and kind of walk you uh, specifically to whatever your questions are. Um, so if you have any interest of doing a follow-up with a larger group within your company, let us know again. We'll be happy to do this. We, we, we like doing this. Demos are kind of fun for us. Um, so reach out to us uh, if you have stuck with the, uh, with the application, uh, but we'll give you trials to it for you to kind of play around with it and uh, you know get the most out of it to understand what, what, uh, what services we can provide to you guys. Again, uh, no more questions are coming in, so I think I'll just wrap it up. Thank you again for taking the time to look at the, the information that we have here today, uh, and we'll look forward to hearing back from you in the future uh, with any follow-up questions uh, or information on, on trials or services that we can provide. Thank you again. Bye-bye.